Hey everybody, welcome to Growing Up Geek, the weekly podcast for geek entertainment and nostalgia. I am Brad, and I'm joined by my brother Matt. Hey, how's it going? And my brother Rob. Yo! And this week we're going to talk about a sort of belated review for No Country for Old Men. And uh, Matt, what is that? No Country for Old Men uh, yep. stars Josh Brolin as Llewellyn Moss, right. who is a Vietnam veteran who leads a pretty simple life in a trailer with his wife, right. and uh, he's out one day hunting in the desert and comes across a drug deal gone bad. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's really no one left alive, and he finds the money that yep. was supposed to be exchanged. And uh, from there, it's about him trying to manage to hold on to it while some very ruthless and greedy people uh, try to hunt him down and find it. It's like a suspense movie. I it's a suspense say. movie? Is it a horror movie? It's I almost have. borderline. It's almost a horror movie, yeah. I Okay. Say. I, it had, I think it had I elements watched. of that. I, I guess it almost feels like a monster movie, too, mm-hmm. because of Javier Bardem. Mm-hmm. If there was no other reason to go see this movie, you need to go see it for Javier Bardem. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he, I feel is one of the best villains to grace the screen in recent history. Wow. Yeah, I agree. The movie doesn't even go, like, five minutes in, and already right. you're like, I am frightened to death of this man. Yeah. You know? They don't waste any time in establishing his character, right. in how completely ruthless he is, right. in establishing sort of his code, and, and mm-hmm. then um, he goes beyond being just this evil guy right. to actually being kind of this force of nature almost hmm. like this specter um, this harbinger of death whoa yeah, <laughs> yeah death incarnate kind of a thing <laughs> I know and it, it makes his his villainy like so complete right. and um, yeah like I said that alone is a good enough reason to go see this movie, mm-hmm. but there's right. plenty of uh, there's plenty of other reasons to, right. to go see the movie too. Yeah, I recommend this movie with yeah. with some disclaimers. Um, I mean, the the pros are are again Javier Bardem, and I don't want to put it all on him because you got Josh Brolin who's amazing, yeah. who really I mean has changed a lot since Goonies into this kind of leathery kind of rough. Yeah, deep, you know, gravelly voice. Right, every man kind of character. I actually thought he might be law enforcement from the trailer, mm-hmm, but he's right. he's more of like a, just an every man guy. You can sort of see yourself in his place. Yeah. Um, and Tommy Lee Jones is amazing. And I mean, the tension in this movie, essentially, you could cut it with a knife. I mean, to use yeah. the cliche, I had a lump in my throat probably like within five minutes. Uh, absolutely. Did you? Just like wow, <laughs> this movie is wow. The, the, palpable. The palpable. <laughs> there, I don't know about you guys. I mean, there's several scenes where. I was clenching. I mean, mm-hmm. clenching my buttocks, you know, clenching Absolutely. in the seat. That alone, I think, is worth the price of admission. The other the other pro I'd give it is the authenticity of the Southern kind of experience, if sure. I could say it that way. I mean, there are the, the, all the dialogue, yeah. all of the... I, I recently had a conversation with someone from Oklahoma, and they were saying how people say, I reckon I'm fixing to go do this. Right. There's something about people in the South. Yeah. Their their dialogue is so expressive that their faces apparently don't have to be. Right. And it's worth saying. I mean, Coen <laughs> Brothers are always doing Southern characters. Yeah. And they're always really intelligent. Um, That's true. Yeah. yeah Fargo with, right. the, with the Minnesota accent. Oh, sure. Um, and yeah. A- any of their movies are great for dialogue and, uh, right. and just a certain kind of texture just in the sound of the characters. You could almost listen to it as a radio show. Right. Except that doesn't really apply in No Country. There's a lot of uh, silent, silent oh, moments. Oh, yeah. and that's what I was going to say. The, the, and this is where I would give the disclaimer. There is not much dialogue in this movie. Yeah. If you like your movies to be loud and in your face, this is not necessarily the movie for you. Or There's for them to explain everything, either. True, that's true. I'm trying to recall. I don't even think there was, like, music in this movie, except you know, I don't end. remember I, any. I noticed that, too. It wasn't until the credits, and then even when the credits began to roll, it wasn't really music for a while. It was right. like boots walking in gravel. Yeah. Right. There, there is literally, I don't think, any dialogue for the first, like, five minutes of the movie. Beautiful shots, beautiful vistas, you know... You're gonna you're gonna basically be transported to the south. There's narration by. Tommy. There is narration. Tommy you're right. Lee, Tommy Lee Jones intros the movie. Yeah. With narration, and uh, part of me was kind of um, thinking more about other Coen Brother movies that I've seen, and that got in the right. way for just a few minutes mm-hmm. uh, because it reminded me of the beginning of The Big Lebowski. Okay. You've got this kind of Texas twine guy talking. And, uh, and and narrating the intro and, and and basically saying that there's a story he wants to tell you, 
Right. Uh, so that was all very similar. And then, and right. then the movie just it kicks in. Oh, yeah. <laughs> There's a point where I was kind of like, okay, I- am I going to like this or am I not? And then it kicks in, and uh, the tension. Uh, we always come back to Javier Bardem, and I think that's why is because you don't know when he's going to show up. No, you don't. He moves <laughs> exactly. He moves so softly, and uh, just appears and. That's it, you know. You're done. He's there, you know. Right. He's not the only guy in this movie. There's, there's probably, uh, I mean, there's at least two more characters. There's Tommy Lee Jones mm-hmm. and Josh Brolin, um, and then beyond them, there's other characters that you're that you're uh, looking at. So right. it's not just the Javier Bardem show, right? But he really deserves all the awards <laughs> that this movie I, yeah. might get. Do you hope that he gets a, a nomination or something? Yeah, actor of the, you know, I, I could see him. He'd be best supporting, actor. I guess. It's, I guess it's supporting That's, role. Yeah, it's unfortunately, to say, it's yeah. weird because. He, his face is the largest on the poster, and yet sure. Tommy Lee Jones and well, those he's, characters. He's like the shark in Jaws, I guess. Right. <laughs> he is. Well, actually, yeah, kind of like on the poster. Yeah. Do um, villains ever really win Best that's Actor? That's a good point. You know, and I think uh, in Training Day, Denzel Washington. Right. Which, it, it, does that count? I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Um, I will say one more disclaimer is that uh, there are some scenes in this movie that I felt could have been deleted. And actually, one in particular... Um, the last scene in the movie, I was not paying attention mm. because <laughs> I was thinking yeah. that it was... I, oh, I, I didn't realize it... I hope this doesn't give too much away, but I didn't realize it was the last scene. Me too. Because I was sort of like, okay, this will be a, another deleted scene, something I would consider probably for the outtakes sure. or whatever, and then it ends. And I was like, oh. I would say it's definitely a movie that requires that you pay attention. Right. One of the big problems with m- the way a lot of movies are written today is that they always state what's going on. Mm-hmm. This movie almost dares you to figure out what's going on. I could say it respects the audience right. to, Very smart. to be a smart audience. It expects you to be paying yeah. attention. And Ooh. so, and that reminds me, I wanted to say real quick, not to interrupt you, but th- there's, a, there's an old adage in film about show, don't tell. Right. This movie is the definition of show don't tell. That's what I'm getting at. Right, exactly. There's so little dialogue in some of these scenes and you have no problem figuring out what's going on. And that is smart. It takes a lot more to write a script that has very little dialogue and still communicates that. There's no character saying, man, it's tense in here. You right. Know? It is just friggin' tense. Yeah. Rob and I saw the movie in, together. In a, yeah, in what we thought at first would be a completely empty theater. I think there was just a, a group of like three other college age kids that showed right. up in a bit uh, we saw it late at night and uh, when, when we left the theater I was kind of afraid that I was going to get shot <laughs> I share the same sentiment um, the closest feeling uh, I had was similar to whenever I saw The Departed right. and if you've seen The Departed <laughs> there's enough shooting in that movie right? you know what happens and at the end the kind of the feeling you have, the feeling I had walking out of the theater was very <laughs> similar and also there's that yeah I'm going to round the corner and get shot. You know? Right. Yeah. <laughs> Life is such a fragile thing. Right. Uh, I also really liked uh, Javier Bardem's choice of uh, weaponry. Yes. Um, hmm. He very inventive methods of blowing things up or <laughs> punching Ooh. holes in things. Yes. Uh, really non-conventional. And there's right. a couple ways that uh, he's smart. He's not a dummy. Oh yeah, no. for sure. We could edit this out, but a silenced shotgun. Uh, the sound effect for that thing was incredible. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. And just uh, the, the amount of devastation it, it, it wrought with right. this thump. Very realistic, yeah. too, his those gunshots. His weaponry, I, I believe, is borderline iconic. You know, it's, it, it is. It establishes his right. characters like that's his weapon. That's right. the same way Freddy has yes. his clawed hand yes. or Jason has a chainsaw. Yep. This guy has this. Hydraulic thing. Yeah, what are you? The thing that punches a hole in a cow's, in a cow's skull. skull. Yeah. Uh, let's just say it that way. He's got this almost like a mushroom shaped head. It's just the, you can that tell the shape him. of him is, yeah, very distinctive right. and terrifying. Right. Now, yeah. yeah, you don't want to see this guy in the dark. Which is funny because, in a way, if you saw him walking down the street, you'd. I don't know that you'd think he was scary right. off the bat. He's, right. he's got an almost silly haircut. Right. But, that, uh, and that makes it all the scarier. Yeah, exactly. He's the kind of guy you might tease, and then he's going to pop you with his cattle prod. Oh, or whatever. my gosh. Um, I wanted to say that I saw this movie in the theater, and I have something to say about babies. Not to rant here, but this is the third movie that I've seen where babies cried in the audience <laughs> for a completely non-baby-friendly movie, and the parents tried to stifle it with, shut up. Gosh. 
Uh, and, and so I weep for future generations, but I just had to say that. You know? Remember Disney World when we, we saw that guy trying to quiet his baby? This guy, he's like picking him, turning him upside down and like... Oh uh, yeah, like what is this thing? <laughs> oh yeah, right, it was right. a, there's a scene in No Country for Old Men where Tommy Lee Jones and another old feller right. are commiserating, <laughs> old feller. commiserating how society at large is just basically going down the toilet. Right, <laughs> and you felt that. And uh, Tommy Lee Jones says, you know, uh, you ask me, once, once you stop saying sir and ma'am, oh, it, yeah. it, 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 it all follows. And, uh, there you go. Let's let's leave it at that. Tommy Lee said it best. Yeah, I think you're right. Um, if you'd like to send us an email, you may do so. Our email address is mail at growing-up-geek.com. Uh, I wanted to get growinguppgeek.com, but uh, a guy already had it, and he wanted to charge me $1,700 for it. <laughs> so we have the other one. Uh, that's two dashes in there. So uh, if you'd like to let us know uh, things that you've seen that you like or things, uh, geek memories that you have that you want to share, feel free to. And uh, thanks for tuning in. I'm Brad. And I'm Matt. And I'm Rob. See you later.